Introduction to Animal Agriculture, the Minnesota Swine Industry. Terminology and Production Systems. Let's start by defining some general terms used in the swine industry. A sow is a female pig that has given birth to at least one litter of piglets. Farrowing is the process of giving birth to baby pigs or piglets. The gestation barn is the barn where the sows are housed while they are pregnant until it's time for them to give birth. Just prior to giving birth, the sows are moved to a farrowing barn where the piglets are born and housed for the first few weeks of their lives. During this time, the pigs are processed, which includes giving shots and providing other care to assist in the health of the pig. At this time, male pigs are castrated. Castrated male pigs are called barrows. Pigs are castrated because meat from intact male pigs or boars has a strong, unpleasant odor and taste when it is cooked. Female pigs that have not yet given birth to piglets are called gilts. Barrows and gilts are typically raised in separate pens or buildings because their feeding requirements are different. Swine production can be broken into several segments. We'll discuss each of these production segments separately. Swine production can be broken into several segments. We'll discuss each of these production segments separately. In general, pigs are raised according to the following scenario. During gestation, sows are housed in a gestation barn. The period is about 115 days. Just before birth, the sows are moved to a farrowing barn where they give birth to a litter of 8 to 10 piglets. After weaning, at about 21 days and 10 to 15 pounds, the piglets are moved to a nursery barn where they are raised until they reach around 45 pounds. This takes about three months. From the nursery, pigs are moved to a finishing barn where they will be housed until they're taken to market at around 260 pounds and six months of age. In some production systems, nursery pigs are moved first to a grower barn until they are approximately 150 pounds and then moved to finishing barns. Another option becoming popular is when animals are moved directly from the farrowing facility to a wean-to-finish barn. These barns serve as both the nursery and finishing facilities. Traditionally, swine producers had farrow-to-finish operations where sows and market animals were all kept on the same site and the farmer was responsible for all aspects of production. Some farrow-to-finish sites are still in operation today, but they are generally smaller operations. Today, most producers choose to specialize in one particular area. This change started about 20 years ago, mostly because of the need to reduce disease risk. In a traditional farrow to finish operation, it is difficult to control disease. If the sow herd is infected, it can easily spread to the nursery and finishing barns if they're on the same farm operated by the same manager. Another advantage of a segmented production is that it allows the producer to specialize in one particular area of production. If the producer is very good at managing finishing barns but struggles with breeding and farrowing, they can choose to just operate a finishing barn and not have to worry about the farrowing operation. Some producers have just a farrowing operation. They're responsible for the breeding, herd, and farrowing. When the piglets reach about 21 days of age, they're weaned from the sow and sold or transferred to an off-site nursery. Producers who operate a nursery get pigs when they're about three weeks old and 10 to 15 pounds. They'll stay at a nursery for six to eight weeks and leave when they weigh around 45 pounds. While in the nursery, pigs are kept warm and fed diets that contain easy to digest ingredients including milk products and oats stripped of their hulls. Floors in nurseries typically have plastic slats or plastic covered steel slats that cushion the piglet's feet but allow manure to drop through to the barn's manure storage area. Finishing barns get pigs at 40 to 50 pounds and raise them up to market weight, usually around 260 to 270 pounds. In Minnesota, growing and finishing pigs are fed diets that are mostly corn and soybean meal. Many finishing barns have curtains on the side to provide ventilation for the pigs. The curtains may be opened entirely during warm summer months and completely closed in winter. Wean to finish barns skip the nursery phase. This is a relatively new practice that's popped up since 2001. 
In a wean-to-finish operation, three-week-old pigs are moved directly to the finishing barn. The barns have some specialized equipment that traditional finish barns do not. Their feeders and waterers are designed for smaller pigs, and there are heat lamps to keep piglets warm for the first few weeks. Using wean-to-finish barns means pigs are only moved once instead of twice, saving time and money on trucking and cleanup. Research also shows less stress on pigs that are not moved around as much. Hoop barns are an alternative to concrete and steel buildings. These barns have canvas tops with wood or concrete sidewalls. The floor is usually dirt with concrete below the feeders and drinkers. The barns are bedded with straw or other crop residues like corn stalks. These barns gained popularity in the late 90s due to their low cost and anticipated improvement in pig comfort. These systems also became more popular because they were seen as more animal friendly, allowing pigs to live in a more natural environment. However, pigs in hoop barns are also more susceptible to large changes in the environment compared to pigs raised in conventional housing systems. One downside of raising animals in hoop barns is that pigs raised in hoop barns consume 10% more feed per pound of weight gained and have 10% more body fat at slaughter compared to pigs raised in confinement. Outdoor systems are not very common anymore due to the high labor demand and other factors. However, some producers continue outdoor production to satisfy niche markets that demand pasture-raised animals. Trends in Swine Production In the last 20 years, the number of hog operations in the U.S. has decreased dramatically. This decrease corresponds with a rapid increase in the number of vertically integrated and vertically coordinated operations. This bar chart shows the current state of integration in the U.S. pork industry. 40% of all swine operations have less than 100 hogs, but these smaller farms only raise about 1% of the total hogs in the U.S. Less than 3% of all swine operations have 5,000 or more head, but they represent 53% of total swine production in the U.S. Some of these larger swine operations are affiliated with vertically integrated companies such as Smithfield Foods and Premium Standard Farms. Vertical integration means that the business of pig production, processing, and marketing are all done by the same company. Minnesota is right in line with the national trend in livestock operation size. As shown by the dark bars, there's been a steady decline in the number of producers who raise less than a thousand head of swine. The light bars show the increase in the number of swine operations raising 1,000 or more head. 42% of Minnesota's swine farms have less than 100 head. This includes families with swine as 4-H or FFA projects, hobby farms, or operations that have other income besides swine, such as crops, other livestock, or an off-farm job. While a large number of Minnesota swine operations are small, they produce only 5% of Minnesota's pork. 78% of Minnesota's hog inventory is on farms that have 2,000 head or more. As with the rest of the nation, an increasingly smaller number of operations control a larger share of the pork market. So why are swine operations getting larger? First of all, it requires a greater quantity of pigs to meet family living expenses today. Technology, such as automated feeders, makes it possible to raise large numbers of pigs on one farm. Many producers try to match the number of pigs with the cropland they run. They either want enough pigs to produce manure to fertilize all their crops, or they want sufficient pigs to use all of their grain, thus adding value to the grain. Throughout the livestock industry, there's a trend toward more specialized production. Instead of having a farrow-to-finish operation in which the producer raises the sows that produce the piglets and feeds out the pigs, many producers choose to specialize in one particular phase of production. For example, some producers will focus on sows. Once piglets are weaned from their mother, they're sold to another producer who specializes in raising nursery pigs. Even though Minnesota has less and less swine operations, they have increased their national market share, meaning the pork industry is growing in Minnesota. While other traditional Midwestern states in the Corn Belt have lost swine inventory to such states as North Carolina, Oklahoma, and Colorado, Minnesota has not. Most of this growth has been in the southern counties, such as Martin County. The Swine Industry in Minnesota 
Currently, Minnesota ranks third for swine production in the U.S. Iowa continues to be the number one swine producing state, with North Carolina second. However, Minnesota is second only to Iowa in terms of revenue generated from swine production. In 2005, Minnesota marketed 15 million pigs. The pork industry is an important part of Minnesota's economy. The gross income from the state's producers in 2005 was $2 billion. Each dollar of gross income from the pork industry creates nearly $3 of additional economic activity. Together, they contributed nearly $8 billion to Minnesota's economy in 2005. There are many issues facing the Minnesota swine industry. Permitting and expansion are becoming more and more difficult. Because of the narrow profit margins and economies of size, most producers are building larger barns than a generation ago. The general public often sees these larger facilities as a threat to the environment. Such concerns can delay construction or expansion for months and even years. As the swine industry moves toward larger facilities, many people have expressed concern over animal welfare, particularly the use of gestation and farrowing crates. Florida and Arizona already have laws against the use of such crates. Pork producers need to assure the public that they're treating their animals in a welfare-friendly manner. To address these issues, the National Pork Board has developed the Pork Quality Assurance Plus program, often called the PQA Plus, to provide oversight and training to producers. Diseases also continue to threaten the swine industry. PERS, among other diseases, can cause morbidity and mortality on swine operations, resulting in decreased productivity and economic loss. A better understanding of how these diseases are passed on and dealt with will help producers. Small amounts of antibiotics are used in some swine diets, mostly with newly weaned pigs. This use of antibiotics cuts the chance of disease outbreaks and improves animal health and performance. However, there is a growing public concern about the routine use of antibiotics for livestock. Swine producers are looking at a variety of ways to reduce antibiotic use. Swine producers are also faced with increasing input costs, such as feed and labor. As costs go up, profits go down. Minnesota will continue to remain competitive in swine production for a variety of reasons. Minnesota has good availability of economic feeds such as corn, soybeans, and ethanol byproducts that can be fed to swine. Minnesota swine producers have been quick to adopt modern technologies such as multi-site production, which has improved biosecurity on their farms. The infrastructure for swine production is already in place. Minnesota has two major swine processing plants and exceptional human capital. Not only are the producers progressive, but they are supported by multiple swine veterinarians in the state and various management companies that keep Minnesota on the cutting edge of the swine industry. The producers have developed strong networking to aid in marketing their product, and the University of Minnesota is a leader in swine research and education. Producers in Minnesota utilize this education and research to improve their operations. Finally, Minnesota is located in a major swine producing region, the largest swine producing state in the nation is just to their south, so Minnesotans have access to networks, education, infrastructure, and other resources from Iowa as well as Minnesota. For more information about the Minnesota pork industry, visit the University of Minnesota Swine Extension website or the Minnesota Pork Producers Association and Minnesota Pork Board homepage at mnpork.com.